communication is really difficult. And I'm not just talking about communication because of translating from one language to another, which is difficult, trust me. No, sometimes we speak the same language. We're even using the same word and we cannot understand each other. For so many different reasons. Sometimes we're making assumptions. Sometimes we insert meaning in words that where there should not be th this meaning. Uh, sometimes we use acronyms. Sometimes we use expression or, or sentence that is only intelligible for a few initiate. As you can guess, uh, church has become a uh, experts on this across the century on this topic and it was not such a big problem when almost everything almost everyone sorry went to church uh, a few generations ago but it's not the case today and sometimes uh, church people speak and the people outside the church have no clue what they're talking about if if we just take the example of the United Church of Canada, just our denomination. There's so many expressions, there's so many acronyms. For example, if in the United Church context I use a JNAC, you might know what it is. It's an acronym, but people outside the church, no clue. Even if I use the full name, a Joint Need Assessment Committee, it does not say more if I talk about transfer and settlement, even when we talk about stewardship, even us sometimes are struggling to understand what we mean. So how do you expect people from outside the church to have a clue what we're talking about? I'm speaking about this because uh, I was thinking of the Pentecost story. We're told in the Act of the Apostle that the Holy Spirit, one day the Holy Spirit came to the disciple, were assembled together, they were praying. And the story tell us that after they received the Spirit, they opened the door, they left their room, and they went uh, to the public space where the people were, and they began to speak, Peter began to, to speak to preach and to the amazement ama amazement of all people from many different regions understood what Peter was saying what the, the disciples were preaching and often we talk about uh, this event as divine proclamation speaking in, thong in tongues um, a special language, a miracle of the Spirit. But what if it was simply a case of the disciple speaking in a way the people can understand? And it speaks to us today. It's still relevant, this story, for us today. Because Pentecost is getting out. It's not about uh, trying to get people inside our church and teach, uh, and teach them what I call often the, the churches, this special language with all those expressions. So we will teach them the right expression, uh, the right definition of grace, the proper words one should use for prayers. Instead, the story of Pentecost calls us to, like the disciple, and when we're receiving emails, <laughs> when recording, to accept this disturbance and to leave our room, to leave our churches, and to go where the people are, and to speak in a way they can relate with word they are using, with example from their lives, not ours. And that's why it's so relevant and so provoking when you think about the story, because it's a reflection that it's maybe up to us to learn 
and adapt to their language and not the other way around. The true miracle of Pentecost is something possible still today for all of us today. Reaching out, speaking in a way we can be understood. That's all for me today. I remain the lectionary man, Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.